welcome back. Now, 2023 is in the news again, but this time it's not about who is running or what tribe should get it. At this time, uh, former Speaker of the House of Representatives, Yakubu Dogara, is stating that if we, that is Nigeria, uh, select the wrong leaders in 2023, we would be bringing the apocalypse on ourselves. And the country. He added that the most immediate challenge now is to select conflicts or settle rather conflicts and pull down our barriers and that issues of our development, although important, are not the most immediate. Uh, joining me to discuss this is Lulu Elegbe, a public affairs analyst, and Okbe Oginyowo, a developmental specialist. Uh, many thanks, um, gentlemen, uh, for joining me on this. This cost. Now, 2023, some people would say it's just about two, uh, two years from now. But then, is it too early to start talking about the crop of uh, leadership or leadership that we should be expecting in 2023 vis-a-vis uh, -vis all of these challenges that uh, have been plaguing the country in recent times? Uh, talk of uh, issues of uh, self-determination or calls for self-determination, issues of insecurity in the northwest, in the northeast, in the southeast right now. Let me start with you, Lulu Elegbe. What do you make of all of this, uh, what should we be looking at when we talk about the right leadership uh, structure in Nigeria? Hello, Lulu, can you hear me? Did you get my question? Yes, I can hear you. I can barely make out what you say, Lulu. Right. All right, okay, I'll come back to you, Lulu. Let me get Okbe back, because I can't hear what you're saying, um, uh, Lulu. Let me start uh, with Okbe. Uh, you know, you, you heard my, my postulation and, of course, all of the issues that we have. Do you think electing the right leader or leadership in 2023 will actually bring about uh, the needed change we need to see in Nigeria? Yeah, so uh, I think I heard it in the first account. I do not. Uh, I do not think that... Um, Showing anybody within the structures as it is right now will have any significant difference on on Nigeria's uh, trajectory. I mean, if there is anything the Buhari administration has shown to us right now, it is that uh, whoever the people who believe that maybe a big man by virtue of his you know disposition or body language right now will one way or the other clean up the system, that has been uh, proven to be a fallacy as impossible. So I, I think that um, the speaker's statement was just maybe clever by us in the sense of that, I mean, he was able to articulate some of the challenges we have regarding, you know, security, unemployment, and now the entire country is more or less volatile at this very junction. And, you know, clamor for some kind of need for a degree of, for a, of a consensus, of a coming together to determine what kind of government we should even run in the first place. You know, but it, it's, it's not, it's definitely not, it goes back to our political elite making it about themselves and trying to, you know, break down every single conversation towards who gets elected. I mean, it's two and a half, it's one more years away from the 2023 election, and from all he can he has to say about what is going on is how the present arrangement is fundamentally going to be about who 2023 is. The present administration, as it is, there's still so much they can do. What about you know what what the government is presently doing wrong? The center cannot hold today; it's not going to hold in 2023. Who even says 2023 is going to hold the level of hostilities we are saying? Yeah. As of today alone, there's been reports of violent conflicts in up to about 10 states. There's been in Kebi, there's been in Kaduna, there's been in Yobe, there's been in Lagos, there's been in Rivers, you know, there's been in Anambra, you know, substantiated crime of violence. So, so, what, so what, are we, what are we talking about, talking about 2023 and, and political leadership? You yeah. know, so I always say, you know, think of the greatest leaders that you know in the world over. If you throw them into the Nigerian system, as it is right now, there's not much they can do. It's a system problem. So that, that's, my, that's my own position on that is, uh, um, statement. All right, thank you, Okbe. Uh, Lulu, let's uh, bring you, uh, you know, into this conversation now. Uh, Okbe seems to think that uh, the issue in Nigeria is uh, systemic and not necessarily that of a leadership. Specifically, he said if you uh, if you brought uh, the you know the leaders from the Western world or those highly acclaimed leaders, the issues might not really change right now. But do you really agree that uh, we have an issue of leadership uh, as against the uh, issues of uh, maybe division, uh, no love lost? Um, amongst uh, various ethnic uh, uh, biases in Nigeria? Well, I agree with him um, partly, but I think it's both. I think it's systemic and I think it's leadership as well. Um, and I also agree with what he was saying. If you look at just what's happened in the last few hours today, um, we're talking about 2023, but the rate at which we're going in terms of violence, in terms of chaos, 
there may not be a 2023 Nigeria if we, if we continue at this pace. It's, it's, it's quite disturbing where we are. So when we start talking about 2023 and the kinds of leaders we want to see elected, it almost feels like a false narrative in a way, because that's not really the most important thing right now, to be honest, because if we don't deal with the immediate issues right now, then it doesn't really make any difference who's, who's president or who's um, senator or governor or whoever in 2023 if you don't and which is why i agree with okay if you don't fix the system it really makes no difference who is in the leadership position it could be the most competent person on the planet but if he's forced to work within a system that doesn't function mm. then he's not going to be able to do anything it's that simple all right so Lulu, Lulu. I, I, I think i think it goes beyond who, who we elect or don't elect in 2023 it's a lot more um, nuanced than that i think Okay, Lolo, if we fixed uh, some of these issues that both you and uh, Okbe, you know, have outlined the issues of uh, insecurity, the issue of uh, stag stagnated growth in, the, in terms of the economy, and uh, we have that fixed, and uh, we have maybe like a greenhorn who has, uh, you know, not really... Uh, been so experienced when it comes to the issue of leadership, uh, uh, maybe various spheres of his life, do you really think would not have a problem? So I think, so you're saying that if we had um, a political leader who has no leadership experience or who has no Yes, yeah, who, uh, who is that. practically inexperienced and uh, um, maybe some of these issues have been fixed ahead 2023 and we uh, bring someone who doesn't really have a pedigree, you know, uh, of, of a politics and leadership in Nigeria. Do you think we would not have issues also? No, of course we're going to have issues. That's why I said it's two things. It's systemic okay. and it's leadership. So it's not it's not just one thing, I think, because um, end of the day, if, like I said, if the system's not fixed, then it doesn't matter who's the leader. But even if the system is, if, even if even as the system is, or if the system is fixed, then you still need a competent hand to drive that change. You can't, you're not going to be able to do it that way. Now, in terms of um, uh, someone who has, has no political experience. My personal view on that is that it's a mistake um, because whether we like it or not, politics is politics anywhere in the world, not just in Nigeria. You still have to deal with politicians. There are political realities that anybody has to deal with. And usually, when people say things like, "Oh, I'm not your tip, I'm not your, I'm not a politician. That's why you should vote for me because I see things differently," I think that's nonsense because. If you, if you go through a political process to get a political, um, to get a political position, by definition, you are a politician. And you have to go through that process. You have to face certain political realities. There are things that you might want to do, good or bad. Well, not bad, but there are things you might want to do and say the opposition wants something different. Not that any of those two things are wrong, but they have a different vision. And because they have maybe um, a lot more political influence than you do. You have to deal with that. That's what the political reality is. And that's why you need someone with political experience. Unfortunately, okay. in the country we live in today, um, most of the people with political experience are not, unfortunately, they haven't served the country well. That's, that's, that's the reality. So we find ourselves, out, I don't know whether to call it a catch-22 situation where we have um, do we want uh, fresh faces with no experience in politics to run things because we think they will do things better? Or do we want to face the reality because we have a political system and you need to be able to deal with political realities and only someone with political experience can do that? So All those right. are questions we need to answer. All right, thank you so much, Lulu. Okay, let me bring you back onto this conversation right now. Most often than not, uh, Nigerians, uh, you know, are actually faced with a lot of uh, political gladiators who come out ahead of elections to do their campaign electioneering, and they promise all uh, all sort of, uh, you know, you know, miracles you know, to change the system and to change the economy. But most of the times, we find out that uh, at the end of the day, Nigerians. Uh, you know what we see back into uh, as in what we see back in Nigeria is that uh, those who are seemingly you know knowledgeable about the economy and the uh, issues that plague us as a country are not the ones we naturally you know choose you know to be our leaders uh, during elections. How do we begin to change this narrative? So um, I've 
I'm one of those people who have always advocated, and I think even uh, development economics, it's been evident now that, you know, democracy, for democracy to function effectively, some certain ingredients are essential. Education being one of them, it's very, very difficult for people to make the right choices on empty stomachs. It's very difficult for people to make the right choice without being enlightened. So fundamentally, democracy is built to work on some certain constant case, like education, like people's ability right now to have to be fed, to not be able to, you know, be indicted by 5,000 hours to sell their books. So if you look at it in the way Nigeria is set up and this kind of conversation we're having, this is not the average conversation Nigerians have. You know, the vast majority of the Nigerian electorate right now do not belong to that level of, you know, uh, mental wavelength to be able to have this kind of conversations to determine right from wrong. You know, it is still going to be demonic bags and people who can appeal to ethnic and religious sentiments who eventually get into office. So there's an up output problem. You know, sometimes the reality of it right now is this is that, you know, the reason why I always emphasize on systems, which education and all of these other things that are important is that even with a bad it is, look, I use Donald Trump for example, a system, political system, someone can just ride a wave of populism right now for a period of time, you occupy public office for the very most eight years. But the system itself right now is built to even check even the most powerful person in that country. Mm -hmm. So I always emphasize system in terms of the long run of things. Even if, you know, we can wait a bad person out, you know. But if the system is bad, no matter how good the person is, you know. So for me, system is fundamental. So once, once you, what you're putting in right now, it's a garbage in, garbage out system. The people are, do not have the capacity to even hold the people accountable. There is no incentive even not to even take that 5,000 because when they did not take, there is no what difference they make in their lives. You know, so it's, it's, it's fundamentally flawed. You know, the people, we, for, to, get, to get the right people in office, the people have to have the ability right now to make the right choices. So I, I hope that answers uh, um, the question I think you were trying to get at. Yes, you, you did. Uh, then again, um, Lulu, at the end of the day, uh, there is this um, talk of uh, dichotomy, uh, the people who have been there for uh, time immemorial, if I must say, and of course uh, the young um, Nigerians uh, with the passage of the not too uh, young to run bill and all of that. Uh, let's talk about the dichotomy, uh, for instance, now the, the old people, in quote, and of course the young Nigerians. Uh, do you really think that uh, the young people would actually bring um, the needed change and uh, the panacea that we need to see in the country? Lulu, uh, I directed that to you. Yeah, so I think we need to be, I try to be, yeah, so I try to be careful when we talk about um, young people's involvement in politics because I think there's a tendency to believe that um, just because someone is young, it means he has the right, he or she has the right ideas in terms of how to move the country forward. That's not necessarily true. Um, we've had, unfortunately, again, unfortunately, we've had um, some young people in political positions in Nigeria, and they've quite frankly been an embarrassment to young people. That's the, that's the best way I can put it. So the issue, I think it goes beyond being young. Yes, being young is good because you tend to look at the world a little bit differently. And fresh than ideas, fresh blood, as it were. And doesn't have another way of thinking. Mm. Sorry? You know, there's this talk about fresh people bringing in fresh impact, fresh ideas, uh, fresh innovation, and uh, you know, uh, doing things that are not really done the normal business as usual yeah. way. Yeah, but it's, the, the problem is that, that it's true, technically it's true, but the problem is that um, young people's mind, it depends on what the mindset is, because there are a lot of young people whose aspiration is basically it's our turn as opposed to let's go there and do something different or let's go there and offer something different. So, which is why I said the, the, it's, it goes beyond just being young. Just okay. being young does not necessarily mean you have great ideas or you have the best ideas that will benefit the country. You can find a 35, 40 year old person running for office whose ideas are not that different from an 80 year old person running for office. So at the end of the day, it's the, it's that leader, what, it's about looking at that leader, what are, what are his um, individual plans, what, what's his vision for the country, okay. and is it, um, how do we, is it something we can buy into? Mm. So those are the questions we need to ask of any leader. So, and for me, it doesn't matter if that person turns, if young, it turns out to be young, that's great, mm. because I think we need a generational shift. But it's, for me, where Nigeria is right now, I don't think that's the most important thing. I think the most right, important thing so is much. to get that vision and correct these systemic issues. 
All right, uh, we'll leave that discussion at that. Uh, we'll find um, more time to discuss the issue of leadership and, of course, young people vis-a-vis uh, -vis what they are bringing to the table and how we need to see the needed changes in Nigeria. But like always, time is never our friend. We must say our thank yous to Lolu Elegbe, Public Affairs Analyst, and Okbe Orini Owo, our developmental specialist. Many thanks, gentlemen, for joining us and, of course, sharing your, your deep thoughts with us. We do appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. All right, we'll go on a short break now to hear what kind of leaders Nigerians need in 2023. And when we return, I'll be giving you my take. Nigeria should be looking forward to a leader that is not sectional, a leader that has the masses at heart, that will have a program that is Orient, that, that is mass oriented, that can make a lot of youth be employed, gainfully employed, also make the, invest, uh, the environment investment friendly so that other investors that are going to other countries, other foreign investors, will start thinking of coming back to Nigeria to invest. Because Nigeria is a very friendly country, you all know, but because of the situation we find ourselves, especially in the area of insecurity, a lot of investors. Even local investors that are Nigerians are finding their way out of the space because there is no cool place to sit anymore. So come 2023, we are looking for a leader, like I said, that is less sectional, that is also people-oriented, that is investment also oriented, that is also selfless. Uh, we need a, like a young, a young youth who are very sharp on everything because Nigeria just uh, discovered like uh, our president now is a very old man. So he's not risen more fast and more talented anymore again. So we need like a youth and very sharp so that anything Nigeria requests, anything youth needs, should be done fast without no limits. Uh, we, need, uh, we need a young leader. A young leader which is above... Uh, 37, 38 years, and we don't need manipulation leader. What we need, we need um, a young leader that can take care of this country. We need a vibrant man, a young guy that will come up. He's not PDP, he's not APC. We need a new party that will have sympathy. You know that uh, democracy is for the people. It's for the people, it's not for itself, it's not for selfishness. Because now they are ruining us with selfishness. So we, are, we don't need that. We don't need all these old people that have been ruining us in Saipan. We need young leaders. We need people that go out and know what is happening. We don't need this, this, this party. We need a new party. We don't need God Father. People now my take for the issue of integrity. All hands must be on deck to fish out the perpetrators of the dastardly act, you know, the perpetrators of, uh, you know, the, the attack on the governor, as they constitute a small league of persons trying to harm the corporate existence of our beloved country, Nigeria. The mantra for every Nigerian at such a challenging time in our history must be how to forge peace and unity across the nation's divides and to shun violence and wanton destruction. And then for leadership ahead 2023, at a time like this when we are assailed by ethnic distrust, overwhelmed by social and economic problems, buffeted by threats of secession, we need to focus on leadership because as we can all relate, it is the key to dousing the tension and redirecting our collective national focus towards development issues. In 2023, we need that person who can reach across social, class and political aisles to create a national conversation of inclusion. A Plus Politics returns tomorrow. My name is Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for watching. Bye for now.